as you can probably tell from most of my deck profiles, I am one of the types of people that really likes to play with high rarity cards. Now I understand that high rarity cards don't matter to everyone and that's perfectly fine, but for those of us that really like making their deck as holographic as possible, it's really frustrating when you can build a deck that's like 37 out of 40 cards are holographic, but those last three cards have never been printed in more than common or rare. And in today's video, I want to talk about five cards that need rarity bumps. Now I'm looking at this from the perspective of Konami. And what I mean by that is that Konami really tries to bump cards in rarity that are going to see a lot of play over many years, usually in rogue decks, because that sort of guarantees that people will still be playing them like two years down the line. And also they like to rarity bump cards that see play in a wide variety of strategies. Now I will give an honorable mention to Medulce's because I feel like Medulce's really sort of missed the mark in terms of them getting rarity bumps. And what I mean by that is that a lot of the themes from that time period already saw max rarity versions. We have all super rare gear gears. We have a bunch of ultimate and super rare sort of mermail cards. We have fire fist cards and high rarities, but the Medulce's kind of missed the memo. So we have like Medulce Chateau and Medulce Ticket and Medulce Messengelato and Medulce Catwaffle. All these cards are just like common and rare. And it's kind of sad. So that's my honorable mention because I think that we were kind of past the point of those cards needing rarity bumps. But I hope that someday if they do like another legendary collection, maybe they can throw them all in there. Because that's something I personally like to see. But I don't think they actually meet the criteria that I just mentioned. So they're just an honorable mention. Anyway, for the actual list, number five, we have Predaplant Orifice Scorpio. Now this is a card... And this would kind of be an ongoing theme in this video, uh, spoiler alert, but this is a card that actually did see a reprint in the recent OTS pack. However, it was a common reprint, so that's actually a lower rarity than it was before that pack because it comes out as a rare normally. Uh, this card is absolutely deserving of a super rare printing. Probably not an ultimate rare printing, but a super rare for sure. Uh, it's incredibly powerful. It does a whole bunch of stuff for a lot of different decks. It's seen play in like a ton of different stuff. Anything that's playing plant monsters, you can summon this with Lone Fire. Zodiac's kind of experimented with it for a while. Any deck that's playing Brilliant Fusion or Instant Fusion or even random fusion cards like Shadal Fusion is usually playing Predaplant Orifice Scorpio. The card is just so versatile, goes in so many different decks, and is looking to see a lot of play as soon as we get the Plant Link Monster coming up. It almost just makes sense for this card to have a super reprinting already, but the fact that it got that print in the OTS pack as a common is sort of silly. So hopefully in the future, this card can get ready on because I foresee this card being very popular going forward. At number four, we have Fluffle Bear. Now, maybe I'm a little biased here, but hear me out. Fluffles are a deck that's almost entirely able to be max ready. If you actually just watch my last Fluffle deck profile, there's only like two cards in the deck that aren't high rarity. Well, three cards and uh, two of them are going to be on this list. But Fluffle Bear is a card that is... Uh, it's so good in Fluffles, it's almost always a staple three of, and it's been around forever, and it's really surprising that it wasn't printed in Fusion Enforcers as a super rare with the rest of the Fluffle archetype. Now, this card does have a Starfoil printing, but Starfoils are really lame, so can we just give this card a super rare printing? I almost put Fluffle Wings on this list, but I can sort of understand that that card's a little newer. It's not always a three of, it's usually just a, a one or a two of, but Fluffle Bear really does make sense to have a higher rarity printing because it's such an integral part of the Fuffle strategy, and it's one of their oldest cards. It came out in the very first set that Fuffles were released in, and it doesn't make a lot of sense that it hasn't seen a printing other than the Common and Starfoil. Once again, I really don't count Starfoil as holographic. Starfoil is just, I mean, if the card needs to be under a, a light at a certain angle for you to see its rarity, then I don't really count it as a higher rarity. Number three is Seer, Male Branchy of the Burning Abyss. Now, hear me out. <laughs> Seer is limited, so that's kind of a one strike against it because it'd be a, only one copy of the card. But all the other sort of basic Burning Abyss cards are printed in Super Rare. We already have Super Rare Skarm, and we already have Super Rare Graph, and obviously Dante is a secret rare. So the fact that Seer is the only original Burning Abyss monster that hasn't seen a rarity bump is kind of ridiculous. Now, it could be argued that Farfa is another card that you would want to see rarity bumped, because that's like at three copies per deck, unlike Seer. But I think it's really important to sort of get the basic four Burning Abyss monsters to Super Rare or higher 
before we move on to the other ones. In reality, it's sort of like Medulce's where I'd really just like to see all the Brain Dust Monsters printed as Super Rares. And yes, I will acknowledge that these cards were all printed as Gold Rare, but Gold Rare is ugly, so most people don't play them. And a lot of people are still just playing with the Super Rare Graph, Super Rare Skarm, and then all rares the rest of it. But Burning Abyss is, I mean, it's sort of really well known right now because it's the longest existing competitive deck in the entire game. No deck has existed for as long as competitively as Burning Abyss has, so the fact that they haven't gotten all super rare buffs is kind of ridiculous, but especially in the case of Seer, because it's so important to strategy. And in some ways, Seer is the most important part of the Burning Abyss strategy, because otherwise you would have no way to recycle your Dantes. So the fact that Seer is the one original Burning Abyss monster that has not seen a rarity bump is a little strange. Number two is another card that not only I use in my last deck profile, but also that recently, well, sort of recently, did see a, an OTS pack printing, and that is Unizombie. Now, Unizombie is just like Predoplant Orphus Scorpio, and that it saw an OTS printing as a common. Like, what a ridiculous situation. Why would you print a card that's already a common, a card that needs a rarity bump, as a common a second time. It makes no sense. I have no idea why they did that. But Unizombie is so good. It's played in a variety of decks. It's pretty much been a good card as since it came out. Uh, ever since day one, this card has been played in so many different stuff. Uh, it's great for Synchro Summons. It's great for XYZ Summons. It's great for Link Summons. It pretty much carries the whole zombie engine, uh, even more so than Mizuki and Shirinui Solitaire. Without Unizami, you have nothing to actually combo with those cards. So the fact that Unizami hasn't seen a super reprinting, a little strange. And zombies in general are going to stick around forever, pretty much. Cards like Mizuki and Shirinui Solitaire and Unizami especially make sure that the zombie engine will remain intact for years. And currently, if you're building a Light Sworn deck, this is one of the only cards that is not actually higher than a, a rare. It's, there's so many different holographic cards in Light Sworns. All the Light Sworn cards themselves are holographic. Shirinui Solitaire and Mizuki are holographic. Even like the Brilliant Fusion engine is holographic. Most of your draw spells are holographic and then there's unizombie and it's like a common and one of the most beautiful high rarity decks of all time but obviously you can't just not play unizombie so it's sort of just the the awkward common in a deck that's almost always max rarity in every single card except for that one poor unizombie so please please konami print this card in ots pack but don't print it as a common again just print it as a super that'll make everyone happy and moving on to number one there are a lot of cards that sort of could have made this list and i don't even think this is a comprehensive list of every card that needs a rarity bump because there's always going to be stuff that people want bumped for their specific archetype that they play a lot but one of the cards that's pretty much seen play since day one just like unizombie but has actually popped up in a much wider variety of decks is perform age trick clown now i think Everyone kind of knows that Trick Clown needs a rarity buff. It's sort of a running joke by this point. This card has seen play for so many different reasons, and is still seen play in a lot of decks that play Brilliant Fusion, such as the Light Sworn strategy. Now, Performance Trick Clown is such an incredibly powerful floater monster, a level 4 monster. It's good for Link Summons, it's good for Synchro Summons, good for XYZ Summons, just like Union Zombie. But this card can be played in pretty much any deck that plays level 4 monsters, and a lot of those decks that are playing Performance Trick Clown are budget strategies that are going to see play for years. Cards like Performance Trick Clown are really cool because they can be fit into so many different decks and there usually aren't cards like that. Even the other ones on this list are all pretty specific to certain strategies. Even a card like Yunu Zombie that's fairly generic needs a zombie engine to support it. But you can literally just throw in a Performance Trick Clown into almost any rank 4 deck and actually see some success, especially if that deck does happen to play Brilliant Fusion, because before Mage Trick Clown is so good with uh, Brilliant Fusion, it's just crazy. And that's not to say that before Mage Trick Clown is a perfect card, but it does happen to have pretty much everything about it be good or great. The effect is amazing, the stats are good, the typing is good, the attribute is good, the level is good. Everything about this card is good or better, which makes it not surprising that it 
it's seen so much play ever since it's been released and i don't think we're going to see this card stop being played for a very long time it's very rare for a card to hit so many marks correctly and i think that it just goes to show that a card that's really simple in effect can be very powerful as long as that effect happens to be really good and also one that no other card can accomplish but anyway that's going to wrap up my top five cards that need rarity bumps please let me know in the comment section what cards you want to have rarity bumps maybe you've been playing an archetype for a long time that i don't play so you know of like a, a specific card that's really annoying that it's not a higher rarity and yes i know like i mentioned at the beginning of the video rarities don't man it or don't matter to everyone and that's perfectly fine but i don't think it's really fair to sort of take people down and make fun of them for caring about high rarity if those same people that you're making fun of aren't making fun of you for not caring about it uh, high rarity is just something that makes your deck look nice it gives you a better presentation and some people that have the access funds to pay for those high rarity cards really just want their stuff to look as nice as possible but anyway i will see you guys later bye